Hey guys, Matthew here. I'm going to be going over briefly how to run the numbers on a retail property, how to see if it's a good deal. Briefly, back of the napkin, should I move on? Should I look for another one? Or could there potentially be good income on this one? Now, this is actually a retail center I have under contract. I know I probably shouldn't share them until I close, but I thought this would be a very good you know, example for me to show you guys the back of the napkin math really quick, how I figure out what a retail center is worth or what it will be worth once I'm done fixing it up. So this is a retail building. I gathered all the data. I know what the rents are. You got three, 5,030 square feet, three retail units, one, two, three. It's pretty much 1,000, 1,000, 3,000 square feet, total 530. And CoStar here, now this is a software, to, it's owned by LoopNet. They have a lot of great information, but honestly, you can, if you, the free version of this is also available on LoopNet. So right there, that's what the LoopNet listing looks like. Sale for 289, pretty much 290,000 bucks. So I'm trying to figure out what this thing will be worth once the tenants are taken to market. It's very similar to what people do with uh, multifamily or this, this is current rents, this is market rent. What do I have to do to get it from here to there? So let's figure out what this thing is worth once it's fixed up. So I did my math. CoStar is saying that rents are between 13 and 16 bucks a square foot. But when I did my homework, it's probably closer to 14. But I'm actually going to run my numbers at 12. Why? Because I like to be pessimistic with my rule of thumb. Just to show, hey, you know, if it works like, if it works while I'm being pessimistic, then my worst case, then it'll likely a good deal. So here we got 12 bucks a square foot times the square footage, 5030. Okay, and then that'll give us 60,360. That's the gross. And then I like to take 25% off the top for expenses. Even though there's a good chance this is going to end up as triple net leases and I'll, I may, they may be covering all the expenses, I still like to take 25% off the top just to save for future major expenses. I like to have healthy reserves. And, you know, in some cases, if a tenant goes dark, vacancy. So I'll always take 25% off the top with retail. So I'm going to multiply this by 0.75. So that'll, that'll eliminate 25% of the gross. So that's saying my NOI at 12 bucks a square foot and a 25% expense ratio will be 45,270. Okay. So now then I'm going to divide that by the market cap rate. Okay. So I, I figured out the market cap rate was around 8.5. A couple of ways you can find out. I like to use this uh, NAR tool. The National Association of Realtors has commercial real estate reporting. So I could go here and type in Wichita. Hmm. The wife is cooking something and it smells delicious. So you can go to Wichita here and scroll down. They'll have office, multifamily, retail. They'll have the vacancy rates. They'll have the market rents, that 14 bucks square foot's market. And then they have the cap rate. Make sure we're still in Wichita. We're in Wichita right there. So the market cap rate is 7.6, but I'm running the numbers at 8.5. So I took a whole 100 basis point increase when I run my numbers here. Normally, it's not that much, although I feel like this is closer to an eight market, but I'm still going to at 0 0.085. So the building at $12 a square foot and the 75% expense ratio, that means 25% of that $12 a square foot is going to go on expenses. And at an 8.5 cap on market cap 7.6, the building's worth 532,000. Okay. So I did some estimates. I got some contractors out there and I'm going to spend about 20 to 25,000 in this building, upgrading the facade. I got to figure out what I'm going to do with this to make it look more modern. It's a 1980s building, but it looks like it was built in the forties. So really going to upgrade this, this building. I'm going to upgrade this out here, maybe get some better lighting. The church that's right here doesn't actually have a sign. So I'm going to really going to upgrade the exterior of the building. redo the parking spend between 20 and, $30,000 on the building. And then I'm going to tell the tenants, hey, I took care of the building. I made it look more beautiful, more bright. I'm attracting more customers for you guys. 
but I need you to pay something closer to market. And right now they're all at like five or six bucks a square foot. Really, they've had really old leases. So I'm going to take their leases to market after spending some money on the unit. So I'm going to be all in this thing, 310, 320, let's say 340 for holding costs for the two, three months. And then once I re-tenant the building or take the current tenants to market, the building will be worth 530 within a year or so. You'll see me put this back on the market for 530, 550. Now, if I can get $14 a square foot, which is market, every indication is telling me that that's market times 5030, I'm still going to take that 75% expense ratio, 25% off the top. That's going to be my NOI divided by the same market cap, 621. Now, the reality is it's not going to sell at an 8.5 cap. Probably is going to sell closer to an 8. So if we're being a bit more realistic, this asset's going to be worth closer to 660, 650 once it's stabilized in that market rent. So that's that's the whole thing. Now, once I have it under contract, then I really dove in and I'm doing my deep underwriting where I'm actually trying to figure out what's the taxes, what's the insurance, who's currently paying what, what's the probability, and I'm going to get on the phone and try to talk with these tenants, see who's likely to stay, who's likely to leave. I start doing my investigating work once it's under contract. So that's this is the full underwriting for this project. Um, so I'm kind of like estimating what expenses are going to be who's going to leave, who's going to stay, and how long it's going to take me to stabilize this project. But I'll, I'll link to this uh, this NAR tool here. It's been great for me to be able to grab a market and see what the major metrics are for the different asset classes, what's the vacancy and price per square foot for office, multifamily, retail. So this all will also tell me a decent amount about the market. So the 3.5 vacancy rate in this market. So that's a really low vacancy rate. Yeah, rent growth has been pretty stagnant, but low vacancy rate, decent price per square foot for the price per square foot that it's selling at. So yeah, next thing is just going through the due diligence. This is my spreadsheet here where it's like how I know whether or not to continue moving forward with property analysis, quick rule of thumbs. And then we have when it's under contract, these are things I need to get done. And then when I close, just a little... Uh, something for me to lean over and see if I'm missing anything. So I like to see an average daily vehicles of 12,000 square foot, uh, sorry, 12,000 average daily vehicles. CoStar has a great tool. If not, there are, I mean, you could, it's public data. You just got to dig for it. Plus is right here, 17,455 vehicles per day. So you got decent traffic on there. Checks that box for sure. Let's see what else we got. We got location density. I want at least 10,000 population within one mile. Again, CoStar makes that really easy for me. I can go right here and see there's 17,000 people within a one mile radius. Average income is a little low. So it is a lower income neighborhood, but still there are retailers that are going to come in. But this is also pretty interesting that the market sale price on a per square foot basis is 143. Now, typically this will include a lot of new sales because you know most of the time when they report numbers, it's the, the newer buildings are the ones that are more, more likely. So I'll take 75, 25% off the top of the market price per square foot. So I'll take 25% off this and then multiply it by the square footage of my building. And that is just a very, very ballparky idea of what this thing would be worth when it's, uh, when it's renovated. The newer the building is, the less I'll take off. So if this was built 2015, I might take it at 143. If this was built 2025, it's likely I'll likely take it at a dollar 160 bucks a square foot. So that's another quick way to kind of. So you're just trying to figure out what is this thing going to be worth after I put in the effort, and is the amount of work and the amount of money I have to put into this versus what it's worth. Very similar, similar to flipping a house or flipping a multifamily property. What I like about retail is there's less people going after the deals. So it's easier to find a deal like this where if it was a multifamily deal that was like five units for 280, but the, the building would be worth 500 after the units were brought to market. If this was multifamily, this thing would have disappeared in a second. It would have, it would have gotten off the market within a half hour of it hitting it. But because it's retail, it tends to sit a little longer. Less people know how to run the numbers. Parking. 
I want three spots per thousand square foot. You can do the math. You can figure out how many parking spots there are and divide it by the square footage. But thankfully, CoStar does that for me. And it's telling me there's 4.37 spots per thousand square foot. So CoStar is expensive, but it does save me a lot of time, especially when I need to run the numbers on a bunch of properties. See what else I got in my spreadsheet here. Signage. I want to know, is there signage or do I have to go and beg the city to put up signage? And then I want to know what's going on with the current tenants. How much are they paying? When's it going to expire? Do they have rent increases? Do they have options to renew? So now I'm just, you know, double checking what's going on with the current tenants and how long, how hard is it going to be for me to take this to market? Who's, who's going to stay? Who, who should I expect to, uh, to release what units? And then Google measure building. I'll go over this very, very, very briefly, but there's a way for you to measure buildings, ballparkly measure buildings on Google. So this is the building here, right? So what you can do is you can hit right click up here and then hit uh, measure, where's the measure distance? Measure distance, there it is, last one. Measure distance from here to here, distance to here. So this is 1000 and let's say 1013. And then what I can do, I'll use the corner, 1013 or 113 times about 50. If I go here, 1,000 or 100, I don't know, I keep saying 113 times 50, boom. So this building might actually be a little bigger than what they're saying. So now I know, okay, I'm going to measure this building while I have it under contract because it might actually be a little bigger than what they're saying. Google Maps isn't perfect, but it'll give you, a, it'll at least let you know if something's really off. If I was measuring this building at seven or at eight, there might, there might be a golden opportunity to buy a property that's less, that's more square footage than they're advertising. The opposite could also be true. If I, uh, if I measured this building and it said 2,500 square feet, okay, something's wrong. Maybe this, the measurements aren't as accurate. So that's it. I quickly run the numbers, what's market. And then it really takes 30 or 45 seconds each. But once you get dive into a market, so now if I, let's say I do three or four in Wichita, I know rent's about 12, 13, 14 bucks square foot. I quickly run the numbers. Okay, 12 bucks square foot times market, times square footage, times 0.75 divided by the market cap rate. And I can do this really quick for a bunch of properties and see, is there a big enough gap between uh, what they're asking, how much is it going to cost to stabilize and the, the stabilized asset price. Okay, I'll be posting videos, uh, updating you guys about this specific asset, you know, once it's under contract, once it's, I mean, it's under contract now, once it closes, once the work starts, I'll keep you guys updated. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the, the video. Happy hunting, like, subscribe, do all that. I'll be posting a lot of, uh, a lot more about my portfolio and uh, what's, what's going on, what's moving and what's shaking.